Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 13th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk about a new economic paper that shows that restrictive carbon-based policies that cut off oil, gas, and coal production or aim to reduce it at the source is a, is a very effective means of addressing human-caused climate change. Um, but before I do, I, I'd like to discuss again the projected warming scenarios that are provided by IPCC. And these warming scenarios basically uh, well, underlying these warming scenarios are assumptions about, one, how much we cut fossil fuel emissions over the coming century, and, and two, how well we are able to replace energy sources with clean energy sources, and three, how well we are able to reduce other carbon emissions, and four, whether or not we are able to achieve some kind of carbon negative society that that draws down carbon from the earth's atmosphere if you get all four of those you get the lowest range warming scenario if you get very little of any of those you get the worst case warming scenario so I also want to be clear that you can still get the worst case warming scenario if you have some renewable energy, a little bit of carbon drawdown, and some minor increases in efficiency, and some minor changes to the way we do things. So long as we keep burning massive volumes of fossil fuels and have fossil fuels linked to rapid economic growth. If you can decouple fossil fuels from economic growth and stop burning fossil fuels, then you can get away from that nightmare scenario. But if you don't do that and, and you still get more and more fossil fuel burning over time, you get to the worst case warming scenario, which is RCP 8.5. Now, among those of us who are clean energy and climate change response advocates, we are constantly looking at these multiple methodologies as ways of confronting the problem. And, and these multiple methodologies are boiled down to one, how can you cut off fossil fuel burning? And two, how can you promote clean energy? Because those are the two things that really hit the center of gravity of the problem at present, due primarily to the fact that fossil fuel interests are, are so powerful that they hold capture over many government systems. And if you can weaken fossil fuels economically, you can weaken the stranglehold that fossil fuel-based politics have on many of our decision-making bodies, thereby opening up the, the process of a more and more rapid response and escalated response to human-forced climate change. Now, this escalated response is necessary right now because we are facing a, a shortening time span into which we are going to start seeing catastrophic impacts from human-caused climate change if this escalating response does not occur. So I know it looks like a simple graph and a hard to understand graph, but the graph actually says a lot. It, to me, it's a scary graph. So um, especially this end of the graph. We don't, we don't want to be on this end of the graph. We want to be on this end of the graph. This end of the graph involves less trouble, less potential catastrophe, a, a, a range of human-caused warming that, that we might potentially be able to make our way through. 
this end of the graph, uh, as an emerging threats analyst and expert, uh, and someone who's looked at threats to human civilization and, and particularly Western systems for you know a couple of decades now, this end of the graph to me is is, is a really tough one. I, I it's hard to see how uh, stable societies make it through this, and and the worst case scenarios that some people fear become possible at this end of the graph. So I just want to talk about this a little bit more. So, so we, this, these are the kind of economic systems that we want to invest in, that we want to have inertia in our political systems, things like wind and solar and electrical vehicles and other proven clean energy technologies that have proven that they have a rapid learning curve and can be rapidly deployed. On the other end of the spectrum, if we continue to subsidize fossil fuels and, and spend money on new pipelines and new mines, then things like this coal plant, which emit massive, you know, tons and tons of, of greenhouse gases into the Earth's atmosphere, become a legacy investment and create an economic and political inertia that make them really hard to uproot if if you keep building them the, the more of these we have the harder they are to shut down because people have spent money on them people have planned to make a profit on them for the next 20 or 30 or 40 years at least so so the more of these we build the more of these we invest in the more of these we fuel uh the more uh, supply lines and supply change we build to these kind of systems then the further up the the, the level of, of climate catastrophe we climb so for years and years now, uh, clean energy and climate activists have been fighting things like pipelines, fighting things like fracked oil wells, doing everything they can to try and get companies to stop spending money on fossil fuel investments through a divestment process as a way to hit fossil fuels at the, suppl um, at the supply side, hit, hit, hit the supply chain, is one way of, of dealing with the climate crisis by, by cutting off the, the carbon emissions at the source. And the other way, one other way of dealing with the climate crisis is to support clean energy and help clean energy to outcompete fossil fuels. So, so it's, it's kind of a two-pronged approach, but you can't really have one without the other. And, and ultimately, the most effective means is to cut off the fossil fuel investments and the fossil fuel extraction and 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 the construction of of infrastructure that that creates a legacy investment in fossil fuel burning and and that's that that's the crux of the problem that's where the the source of the problem is coming from so you have multiple prongs in your approach but but the ultimate goal is to not mine not extract not ship not burn fossil fuels and, and that's what a recent article in Vox talks about. And I just want to highlight this article for you because it's a good article. David Roberts here takes a deep dive. Uh, David Roberts can be uh, pretty wonky, uh, but he, this, this particular one to me is, is, a, is a key piece in, in the whole process of coming up with a solution for human-caused climate change. Now, this, this article is based on a new paper, new study that was produced by some economists entitled Cutting with Both Arms of the Scissors, the Economic and Political Case for Restrictive Supply-Side Climate Policies. And this particular study looks at the, the net positive benefits of various climate policies and highlights why restrictive policies are very important for dealing with the climate crisis. So I encourage you to read this article by Dr. Vox over here entitled, It's Time to Think Seriously About Cutting Off the Supply of Fossil Fuels, and also to think about this graph, which though it might not be you know, colorful or dramatic, it implies a great deal of trouble and potential for trouble avoided. So thank you for joining me, and I'll be chatting with you soon.